GA4. Now, if you haven't um, heard about GA4, then I'm not quite sure where you've been over the last few months, because it does seem to be a big headline at the moment, given that GA4 is actually launching um, in two days time. It means that your Google Analytics dashboard is going to change. So if you are familiar with what's called Universal Analytics, which is the standard dashboard you use when you go to Google Analytics, then that will all change in two days time. And actually, if you log in at the moment, you will see this big countdown. This basically means that the original GA dashboard is going to stop processing data in two days. So it will no longer be analyzing what's going on on your website. And actually migrating across to the new platform is strongly recommended. If you haven't done this already, don't worry. You have definitely still got time and it doesn't take that long to migrate. You've just got to make sure that you do go through each of the steps. If you log into Google Analytics and go to the GA4 Setup Assistant, it looks like this. It gives you a breakdown of everything that you need to do. And as you go through each step, you have to physically mark it as complete. So over on the right hand side, you can see where it says not started, not started next to the arrow. If you click on the arrow, you can actually mark things as complete. So, for example, if you are using a Google ad, Ads account, then you can link your new GA4 to your Google Ads and then mark it as complete. If you're not using Google Ads, then you can just simply mark that section as complete. So that's done. The things that are really important to do are to set up your conversions. Now, this is what Google is now calling events. So if you have certain events on your website that you're tracking in Google Analytics, these are now going to be called conversions and you do have to reset them up in GA4. So typical events might be things such as somebody filling out a form on your website, somebody downloading a PDF or a brochure, perhaps someone watching a video, making a purchase, adding something to a basket, et cetera, et cetera. So anything tangible that somebody does on your website that indicates to you that they have converted is now a conversion. So do make sure you spend a moment setting those up. It's really useful to track these. And of course, this is what's going to help you understand how powerful your social media marketing is for your website and for activities on your website. Now, there has been a lot of negativity around GA4. I think it's human nature. We don't like change. We don't like getting to grips with new tools, especially when they are forced upon us. But I would say that having spent a little bit more time in Google Analytics GA4 in the last two weeks, I'm actually feeling quite positive and excited about the new change. And the main reasons are GA4 is going to allow us to not only see how people are moving through our website, but also it will give you far more data around how people engage with particular pages on your website. So things like how many people are scrolling down a page, how many people are moving their cursor over key events on your pages, how many people are spending time to actually read the text or watch the video, so we're going to be able to know all this juicy data about our landing pages that we just couldn't before. So GA4 is a more powerful tool, but in order to really get the most out of it, you do have to spend some time setting it up properly. One of the things that I'm a big fan of at the moment, as I'm sure many of you are, is AI. I'm a big fan because it does save time and makes life, your life easier. And I'm pleased to announce, if you haven't discovered this already, that GA4 has some really nice AI integrated into it. So the artificial intelligence available in GA4 allows you to automatically create reports with interesting stats. So let's just take a look at how you use the AI in GA4. This is the dashboard, which is showing us acquisition. So this acquisition dashboard, which you can access down the left-hand menu, is telling us how your website acquired traffic. 
You've got the same um, area where you choose your dates on the top right hand side and you can see how much traffic you've acquired and then hopefully break that down by sources of that traffic. You can see here that the majority of traffic on my website comes through from an organic Google search. But if you cast your eye over to the top right hand side there, you can see there is a little button called insights. And that button allows you to set up some custom reports. And you can see there that Google is suggesting the questions that I should be asking about my web traffic. So the question that I, um, I was clicked on or I was compelled to click on first is on what days do I get the most users? And you can see that Google has put that together into a really nice answer for me there, Thursday seemed to be the most popular day last week. And you can keep going back to the suggested questions. And here you can find all kinds of questions around languages, countries, how your website's acquired traffic, where people are coming from, what days, what times, uh, what technology they're using, so which browsers, which devices. You can just click on these questions and Google will put the answers in a report for you there. So I would suggest if you haven't yet familiarized yourself with Google Analytics 4 and you're feeling a little bit um, apprehensive about it, come and have a look at the insights tool, which you can find on the right hand side, just with the graph with the magic sparkle logo. And that is a really nice starting point to starting to understand GA4. Now, I do meet the odd marketer who tells me I think we've got Google Analytics set up, but I never look at it. And I would hope that that behavior is changing as we move into the second half of 2023, because GA4 is what's going to allow you to really start to understand the impact of your social media marketing campaigns. And particularly, it will be important for helping you to unlock future budget for your advertising campaigns, for your influencer campaigns, so that you can prove that social media really is helping to drive traffic to your website. Now, of course, social media isn't just about driving traffic to your website. It is far more around brand awareness and getting people to recognize your name, your logo, your products, your services. But this is... Um, a really good way of getting tangible data about the return on investment that you are making in Google, in social media, sorry. So moving on to the next slide, a lot of questions that I'm getting um, from clients at the moment are around how to make the switch. Um, there are a ton of videos available on the Google help pages. You can actually just type into YouTube how to make the switch to Google Analytics 4. And there are step-by-step -step videos available for you. Um, so do take a look at that. And as I've said, I would urge you to try and do this over the next few days if you can, um, just so that you don't have any gaps in your data. Uh, because of course, if you don't then set up GA4 for a little bit of time, you will not get any data after Saturday because that is when Google Analytics is stopping pulling data into the current analytics dashboard that we have. So hopefully I've made that quite clear and that, um, you know, I know it is uh, you know, annoying to have another thing on our to-do list, but this is a big change uh, that Google is really keen on integrating this year. And as hopefully I have explained, it is important to understand how social media is impacting on your website health.